Welcome. This is David Bowles, Human Meme. Today's topic, Virtue Signaling Advertising. In the past, we've discussed virtue signaling here in your favorite Human Meme podcast. Virtue signaling is publicly demonstrating something false in order to pretend to be valid, to make yourself look good to others in public. Virtue signaling is the epitome of saying you're doing something good without actually doing anything at all. Politics is the best safe haven for virtue signaling, closely followed by any Hollywood film star. But virtue signaling and advertising is coming up fast on both of those positions, and I fear will quite soon take over the top spot of falsity posing as a new and horrible reality. The most fascinating thing about virtue signaling and advertising is the ugliness in that reality. For example, in a recent soap and lotion television commercial, we were presented with a body and another body, and there are scarred and burned and sort of mutilated people. And this was shown in prime time and supposed to be, I guess, a persuasive commercial to press mainstream America into buying the skin products. And right now, as I speak to you, I'm still not certain if that purpose was convincing or not. I guess I just have a hard time believing that a skincare company thinks profits will expand by having a show of people who really cannot be helped with their lotion or soap. And if they cannot be helped or improved, then what is the purpose behind that advertising spectacle? Well, the answer, my human meme friend, is simply this. Virtue signaling. The advertising edition. Hey, look at us. We're an ad agency. We're edgy. We're showing you a softer skin lotion product using people who really can't benefit from the product. So you, by default, by our reasoning, you with the regular skin, imagine what this product will do for you. You go out, give us a buy, support our edginess in advertising. Well, to me, it doesn't make logical business sense or even emotional advertising sense for that attempt at synthesis between message and meaning. The commercial is not inclusive. It is actually exclusive. Oh, and uh, there's this new trend on Instagram, interesting really, by regular people to expose those who fiddle with their Instagram beauty photos just to make themselves look better. These regular people online compare what is posted to Instagram and then what is also posted in a public video or a public publicity shot and seeing all the changes between real life and the virtue signaling of filters can be an alarming sort of advertising to the unsuspecting eye. Those Instagram stars advertise their virtue signaling by doing the filtered reversal of the forever damaged body by creating a new unreality. They don't have skin pores, no skin bumps or buzzers on those bodies and faces, all perfectly blurred and blended with subsequent loss of skin texture, tone, and joint creases, and there's not even an attempt to reflect reality. They just want to create a whole new fake reality in order to sell you very real things that cost real money. It's all just a little bit silly. So, now we have some advertising on TV that is sort of a scheme between both extremes. Echoes by the same misfits on Instagram selling you from the other side of the perfect, imperfect realm. Damaged skin that does not need a scented soap. And the Instagram face that doesn't really exist. And I suppose that is the ideal of using real bodies unretouched and imperfect, to sell you stuff today. 
Oh, and I know you've seen the other kind of virtue-signaling advertising on television. The newest trend is fat people dancing and eating yogurt. Fat people dancing and swimming and biking in their underwear in public on television. All that, and I'm not picking on fat people. Fat is the new thin in America. But you never get to see underweight people advertising, dancing ice cream, or appearing wet in their underpants. No, this is America. We are throttled by a reverse advertising perversion. Revenge of the ordinary. Oh, and I know, you know, we all know, America is a fat nation. At least more fat than thin. And if you're into advertising today, you no longer sell the American ideal. You instead try to sell the American reality. Signaling your virtue, that you are unbiased and inclusive, and that you've settled for the middle ground. Now, in an older advertising age you may not remember... The ideal was the cell. The ideal was the everything. This one thing I'm selling you, this one thing can change you, this one thing can save you from your miserable life. You can become this if you only buy that one thing. And yes, the virtue signaling, the advertising edition back then, was within you when you bought the product. Yes, I believe I can be that wonderful, perfect thing. Here is my money. Please help me. Aspiration was more important than inspiration. All phony behavioral clues were tarnished, disassembled, and trashed. And the idea of selling the perfect, the beautiful, the divine was everything to a product company's bottom line in days long ago now. Well, back then, you, the audience, we, the mark, the subject, the topic, the target, wanted to imitate excellence by purchase. You wanted to become something to be admired. And there was some truth in that pitch. Just looking backward into history and art, we never celebrate the ugly or the broken or the wounded or the poor or the damaged. Oh, no. We only choose to preserve and remember and celebrate the successful, the beautiful, and the extraordinary, right? So, does virtue signaling dumb down the culture or enhance it? Well, we can be who we are and own it. Or we can try to better ourselves through education, working out, eating right, or, or perhaps by buying a certain soap, lotion, acne cream. Do we, as consumers, want regular people selling us extraordinary things because their ordinariness levels out our specialness of what is being sold and purchased? Everything has a price, you know, including us. But doesn't that do nothing for brand loyalty, other than cheapening it down to the lowest common denominator that is accepted by mainstream America? The average American. Who is this average American that advertisers are purging into virtue signaling? Well, let's take a look. Did you know the average American, according to a recent CNBC report, is $130,000 in debt, spends $69 a day, and carries only $34 in their pocket? That's who... The average American makes $48,000 a year, has no more than $1,000 in savings. That's who we are. The average American watches 33 hours of television a week, reads four books a year, and works 34 hours a week. That's us. The average American is 17 pounds overweight, spends two hours a day on social media. That's us. The average American is on the phone five hours a day, drinks 11 alcoholic beverages a week, and exercises 17 minutes a day. That's who. And here's even more. That's who, that's us. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration tells us that only 10% of Americans 
average Americans, that's who, do not wear seat belts. But 50% of average Americans who die in car crashes were not wearing seat belts. How's that for an average American? That's who. That's us. How's that for an average statistical revenge? Oh, yes, my human meme friend, the American average. Not the lesser American, and certainly not the better American. Right. Never the best. Just the average. The middling mainstream, hardly living at all. The American dream. If we see it, we can know it. If we know it, we can signal it. If we signal it, we can buy it. Buy now! No buyer's regret later. And buy now! Before it's too late. Yes, you can still be one of us. The imperfect few. The glamorous all. Because you cannot risk there's nothing left to sell back to the average, aspirational American seeking only the self in reflection and reality in the reflexiveness. Broken or not. And we are all stuck together in a concentric circle, furiously signaling to each other an extraordinarily missing wholesomeness and a completely damaged aloneness that exists only in the empty space between the eye and the flickering, virtuous signal of the television screen. Thank you for listening. Be a human meme.